The Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Will the Secretary please call roll? Senator Flores? Present. Senator Hansen? Here. Senator Gogachia? Here. Senator Pazina? Present. Senator Scheibel? Thank you so much. We do have a quorum. We have all five members present. And before we begin today, we are going to do just a few housekeeping measures. Please do remember to silence your cell phones and electronic devices. The public is advised that during meetings, legislators and staff are using laptops to view bills and exhibits and not for personal reasons. We're trying to be as paper free as possible. So please don't think this is a sign of inattention or disrespect. Please note that we require everyone to submit exhibits in an electronic format the day before the meeting. A few reminders about testifying before the committee. We do ask that you sign in at the table by the door and please provide the committee secretary with your business card if you have one prior to testifying. Even if you're not testifying, you may want to sign in so that there's a record of who's interested in a particular bill in case the committee may want to contact you at a later date. When testifying, please turn on the microphone and clearly state and spell your name and share your affiliation, if any, for the record. Then turn off the microphone each time you're done speaking. If you have any handouts for the committee, you're asked to provide 10 hard copies to the committee secretary for use by the public. We will be taking public comment at the end of each meeting and we'll be limiting public comment to two minutes per person to ensure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak. Please feel free to provide any additional comments in writing to the committee secretary so that they may be added to the official record. Today we're going to be hearing one bill, but first we're going to be doing work sessions. So we would like to go ahead and get started with that. And without further ado, I'll hand it over to our policy analyst, Ms. Keller, who'll be walking us through the work sessions. Thank you, Chair Pazina, Elisa Keller, Committee Policy Analyst. The bills for the committee's consideration are, are summarized on the work session document, which is available on Nellis. And the first bill for the committee's consideration is Senate Bill 112. Senate Bill 112 revises provisions governing groundwater basin assessments and provides that money levied from a special assessment or appropriated from the general fund of a county for costs of supervision over the waters of a designated basin must not be used to pay the salaries and expenses of certain staff of the state engineer. Um, after the hearing, the bill sponsor, Senator Goykachia, worked with various stakeholders and proposed an amendment. There's a mock-up attached in the work session document. And in summary, the amendment clarifies that the money levied or appropriated must not be used to pay employees subject to the provisions of Chapter 284 of NRS, removes the minimum charge and establishes a maximum charge that is equal to the existing charge as of June 30th, 2023, plus the annual percentage increase in the consumer price index for the preceding year and authorizes the state engineer to increase the charge beyond the maximum with the approval of the Board of County Commissioners and provides that the state engineer shall provide to a Board of County Commissioners upon written request from the board a report on the expenditures and activities from the water district account for the particular basin well account of that groundwater basin up to one time per year. Thank you so much. Any questions from the committee on Senate Bill 112? All right, seeing no questions, I would entertain a motion to do pass as amended. Thank you so much, and amend and do pass from Senator Hansen. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Vice Chair Scheibel. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, the motion carries, and we'll assign the floor statement to Senator Go Kachia. Senate Bill 113 revises provisions governing groundwater management plans and was sponsored by Senator Goykachia and others. Senate Bill 113 revises provisions relating to groundwater management plans established for basins designated as a critical management area. After the hearing, the bill sponsor, Senator Goykachia, met with various interested parties and subsequently submitted a proposed amendment. There's a mock-up attached in the work session document. And in summary, the amendment requires the state engineer to affirm or modify the perennial yield of a basin at the same time he or she designates a basin as a critical management area, authorizes the state engineer to modify the perennial yield for a critical management area based on best available science, requires the state engineer to review the perennial yield before reviewing the results of a groundwater management plan and modify the perennial yield if there's been a change, changes the term groundwater committed to groundwater permitted or certificated throughout the bill, 
changes the term stabilizing the drawdown of groundwater to stabilizing the water level of the basin throughout the bill and provides other clarifying language and provides that if the state engineer modifies the perennial yield of the basin, the state engineer shall, as applicable, if the perennial yield is decreased, require all holders of permits or certificates in the basin with a date of priority that is after the date on which permits or certificates in the basin are, were equal to the perennial yield of the basin to comply with the provisions of the approved groundwater management plan. And if the perennial yield is increased, provide that holders of permits or certificates with a date of priority that is before the date on which the withdrawals were equal to the perennial yield of the basin, the opportunity to opt out of complying with the approved groundwater management plan by notifying the state engineer in writing that he or she does not intend to comply with the approved groundwater management plan. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? All right, we're not a chatty bunch today. With that, I'll entertain a motion for amend and do pass, Senate Bill 113. Wonderful. We have a motion from our vice chair, a second from Senator Hansen. Any discussion on the motion? Wonderful. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, great. The motion carries and we'll assign the floor statement once again to Senator Go Kachia. Senate Bill 180 revises provisions relating to groundwater boards sponsored by Senator Goykachia and heard by this committee on March 21st. There were no amendments proposed for this measure. Any questions? All right, seeing no questions, I would ask for a motion to pass. So moved. Wonderful, we have a motion from our vice chair. Do we have a second? Second. A second from Senator Flores. Any discussion on the motion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries to do pass Senate Bill 180 and we will assign the floor statement once again to Senator Gokachia, who will be very busy. Senate Bill 364 makes various changes relating to cultural remains and requires the Office of Historic Preservation of the State Department of Conservation and Natural Resources to adopt regulations to carry out the provisions of existing law relating to the protection on Indian burial sites and historic and prehistoric sites not later than December 31st, 2023. After the hearing, the bill sponsor, Senator Krasner, proposed a conceptual amendment. There's a copy in the work session document to revise section one of the bill to provide if a law enforcement agency goes to a location where human remains are found that are reasonably believed to be Native Indian, the law enforcement agency must, as part of an investigation, consult with a representative of an Indian tribe located in the county where the remains are found or notify the State Historic Preservation Office. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? All right, seeing no questions, I'll entertain a motion to amend and do pass. All right, Senator Goa Kachia, and we had a second from Senator Hansen. Wonderful, any discussion on the motion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries, and we will amend and do pass Senate Bill 364 and assign the floor statement to Senator Krasner. Great, so that moves us into the next portion of the meeting. As a reminder, everyone today, we are returning to the Senate floor at 4.30. So our hope is to get everyone out of natural resources by 4.30 to enjoy the rest of their day after the joint session with Senator Cortez Masto. So we'll now, with that said, open the hearing on Senate Bill 361, which revises provisions relating to solid waste. And we will welcome the sponsor, Senator Stone, forward. Good afternoon, Madam Chair Pazina and members of the Natural Resources Committee. First, I'm very honored to appear before you all for the first time. Uh, thank you for agreeing to hold the hearing on SB 361. I agreed to sponsor this legislation because I think it provides a unique opportunity to not only improve Nevada's environment, but also help diversify our state's economy by attracting new private sector investment and creating new manufacturing jobs. SB 361 seeks to provide a clear permitting pathway for what are known as advanced recycling facilities. 
These are innovative technologies that can take many of the plastics that are currently being landfilled today, things like toothpaste tubes, pouches, film packaging, and foam containers, and convert them back into their basic molecular components so these molecules can then be used again to make new plastics. In doing so, more plastics can be diverted from our landfills. Manufacturers can reduce their reliance on using virgin resources to make new plastics and packaging. And we can create new recycling markets for collected materials that may not exist today. So why is this bill necessary and why couldn't facilities decide to locate to Nevada today? I think on the surface they probably could. However, one thing that's important to companies looking to invest significant resources secure capital investment dollars, and line up customers is regulatory certainty. SB 361 seeks to provide those assurances by clearly categorizing advanced recycling as manufacturing. Nevada won't be alone as 22 other states, including Arizona and Utah, have passed similar legislation. As you'll hear, these facilities do not accept mixed waste, they do not sort waste on the site, nor do they incinerate these materials. I'd also like to point out that 360, SB 361 does not exempt these facilities from any required federal, state, or local air, water, wastewater, hazardous waste, or land use permitting requirements. They have to be in compliant. We have the opportunity here to reduce plastic waste and create a economic development opportunity for all Nevada. With me today is Tim Shustick and Prapti Mihuri, with the American Chemistry Council, who can provide some additional context and answer any technical questions that you may have. Again, I want to thank you for hearing the bill, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Tim Shestick from the American Chemistry Council. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. Uh, for the record, Tim Shestick with the American Chemistry Council, S-H-E-S-T-E-K. Thank you for hearing this bill and for the opportunity to uh, testify today. Uh, by way of background, ACC is a national trade association representing nearly 200 companies that manufacture the raw materials that serve as the building blocks for nearly every manufactured product. Home and personal care products, clothing, clothing sports equipment, automobiles, and electronics, food and medical grade packaging are just some of the examples that are made possible through chemistry. Our members are also at the forefront of deploying innovative technologies to help increase the recycling of hard to recycle plastics, resulting in less material being disposed of in landfills, while also creating plastic resin that can be used to make new packaging and products. Advanced recycling refers to several different technologies uh, that convert post-use plastics back into their original building blocks to help produce new plastics and chemicals. These facilities typically use pyrolysis or gasification, technologies that are also deployed in many other industries. Both technologies heat use plastics, which breaks down the solid material into liquid or gaseous raw materials that can be then used to remake plastics or products for other industries. Plastics are not burned during these technologies uh, or these processes. They often use thermal heat, but take place in the absence of oxygen, therefore no combustion. It is a recycling process and a manufacturing process where raw materials are processed to make new products, plastics, chemicals, et cetera. While beverage, beverage bottles, milk jugs are typically recycled via mechanical recycling processes, advanced recycling works well for plastics that are difficult to sort and process mechanically. As Senator Stone mentioned, things like flexible pouches and toothpaste tubes. Working together, both processes can further reduce landfill disposal. As Senator Stone mentioned, SB 361 does seek to provide a clear permitting pathway for advanced recycling facilities by categorizing them as manufacturing. The bill seeks to clar clearly define the types of processes that qualify as, as advanced recycling, as well as the type of material that would be used as feedstock in the manufacture of new products. These facilities do not receive mixed garbage or waste, but rather plastics that have been segregated or sorted from the waste stream. They do not do the traditional things that facilities regula regulated under solid waste laws do, such as burying, disposing of waste, incineration, nor do they sort plastics from other materials. What they are doing is using plastics as a raw material in the manufacture of new products. As companies look to site these facilities around the country, identify site locations, line up supply agreements, secure investors, uh, this bill would help provide clear regulatory certainty. 
Uh, Senator Stone mentioned 23 other states, including Arizona and Utah. Uh, just some late breaking news, we now have another state, 23 states now, have adopted similar legislation like SB 361. Consumer brand companies today are utilizing plastic resin produced from these types of facilities and new packaging and products, and in doing so, they are reducing their reliance on virgin materials, incorporating more recycled content in their packaging and products, and reducing landfill disposal. We believe this is an opportunity, this bill is an opportunity to further increase the amount of plastic material diverted from landfills while also creating new economic development opportunities in the state. For these reasons, we do respectfully ask that this committee support SB 361. Thank you. I believe my colleague property is via Zoom. All right, please proceed when you're ready. Thanks, Tim, and Prop Murray here. I'm happy to, happy to answer any technical questions uh, from the committee members. All right, do you have any further presentation? Okay, great. Committee, do we have any questions? Senator Gokachia? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I was looking at the list of, does this include plastic bags? I mean, I would love to see them go away. Senator, those types of materials would be part of uh, a, 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 a feedstock that could be utilized in, in these types of technologies. Okay, other, so it, other, it will, other film plastics as well, right? right shrink wrap, other plastic bags do fit film. this category. Glad to hear that. Thank you. All right, any further questions? Okay, we might ask you some questions in a little while. I think everyone is very aware of our ticking clock toward 4.30 right now. Madam Chair, if, if you don't mind. Please. Could I please just uh, go through the bill details real fast? And it shouldn't take very long. Absolutely. Thank you, I appreciate it. So um, section three defines advanced recycling as a manufacturing process for the conversion of post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks into advanced recycled products. Section two notes that advanced recycled products does not include any products that will be sold as fuel. Section four defines advanced recycling as a manufacturing process facility which receives, stores, and converts post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks into advanced recycled products using advanced recycling. Section five through 10 define other various terms related to advanced recycling. Section six defines gasification, which means the manufacturing process through which post-polymers and recovered feedstocks are heated in an oxygen-controlled atmosphere and converted into a syngas, which is then converted into the raw materials in intermediate or final products. Section seven, post-user polymer is defined. Section eight, Pyrolysis defines a manufacturing process which is post-use polymers are heated in the absence of oxygen until melted and thermally decomposed and are then cooled, condensed, and converted into new raw materials or intermediate or final products. Section 9, recovered feedstocks defined. Section 10 defines solvolysis, which is the manufacturing process which uses post uh, use polymers which are purified using solvents. Section 13 revises the definition of solid waste management system to provide the term that does not include advanced recycling. Section 12 revises the definition of solid waste to provide that the term does not include post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks. And finally, Section 11 makes conforming changes to indicate the proper placement of Sections 2 through 10 and the revised statutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Thank you for reviewing the sections of the bill. I guess I do have one question. You know, we mentioned the conversion of post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks into advanced recycled products. Um, can you explain what those advanced recycled products are? Thank you. I think I'll turn that over to property to answer that one. Sure. Thanks, Madam Chair, one for the, the question. So some of the products that you can produce in the actual process um, can be anywhere from the, the basic building blocks to make new plastics and chemicals. So uh, in the case of pyrolysis-based advanced recycling, you take plastics, heat them, and then cool and condense them, um, you know, in the absence uh, of oxygen. And what you get is basically a liquid feedstock that is used as a raw material to make new plastics. So there are about 60 uh, products in the marketplace globally. Um, about 40% of those are in the U.S. Um, from things like uh, eyeglass frames and reusable water bottles and the uh, you know, famous Wendy's drink cups, um, which contain uh, material made from uh, plastics that are processed from advanced recycling. Thank you so much. Any other questions from the committee? Okay, Senator Scheibel. So 
um, I'm reading the bill again, and I see that it has. It looks, I'm sorry, it, just, it looks to me like all it does is provide definitions of stuff. So what does it actually do? Am I, am I just missing like the, the clause where it does something with advanced recycling? Um, is it buried in there? Or, does, or are we just putting definitions in the NRS? Uh, excuse me, Senator Scheibel, thank you for uh, the question. I, I, what we're attempting to do is provide a clear understanding if a facility were to locate in the state of Nevada, they would know what, uh, how they would be regulated and those types of processes that would be regulated under, under this particular statute. So uh, it doesn't mandate anything. It doesn't require uh, uh, you know, companies to do anything other than ensure that if they are going to locate here, they would have a clear understanding that the operation that they're uh, conducting um, is not solid waste, but is treated as a manufacturing facility and, and would be regulated as such. Okay, so basically by creating, so we're adding a new section to chapter 444, which I take it is the manufacturing chapter of NRS. And so by virtue of adding this to 444, we are creating a regulatory scheme. I'm, I'm just confused. Is there, is there another part of NRS that's not reflected in the bill that says, you know, advanced recycling is regulated by so-and-so in the state, and in order to conduct advanced recycling, you have to do X, Y, Z, and now we're defining it? Or are we just providing the definition so that later on somebody can write regulations? It's currently not defined in, in, in statute, and what we're trying to do is, is clearly define it. So if a company is going to locate here, they'll have an understanding of what that permitting process would look like. Can you please give your name for oh, the I'm, record my as apologies. well? Oh, my apologies. Tim Shestick with the American Chemistry Council. Okay. So I understand that it's not defined in statute, but is it used in statute? Uh, again, Tim Shestick with the American Chemistry Council. I, I don't believe that's the case. No, we're, this, this is a, a new a new proposal and a new new language that would be incorporated in the statute. So I don't understand what we accomplished by adding a definition if the term isn't used anywhere in the statute. Again, Tim Shustig with the American Chemistry Council, it, it, it would be used in the statute uh, and it would, if a company were to be locating here and operating an advanced recycling facility, they would understand where they fall in terms of potential permitting and how they would be treated as a, a manufacturing process and not part of a solid waste operation. Okay, thank you. I think just to follow up, and, and that's the importance of section three of the bill, which defines advanced recycling as a manufacturing process for the conversion of post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks into advanced recycled products taking it back to its virgin form so that they can then remanufacture into other plastics instead of buying virgin plastics and hopefully taking, taking plastics that right now are going into landfills which have no value to trash haulers actually putting a value on them and allowing them with a new present technology that hasn't always existed to get them back into their um, virgin materials to be reused again. I believe Senator Flores has a question as well. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And this is not an I got you question. I think it would just help clarify um, our Vice Chair's questions. If we don't define it now, advanced recycling comes to Nevada, what, what are your concerns? And I, I think that would make it easier so that we can just explain why we think it's important defining it now. Let's just assume the company's here now. None of this is there. What are your concerns? Senator Tim, uh, Tim Shustig with the American Chemistry Council. Uh, the concern is that there is a, a, currently there's a lack of clarity in terms of how they, some of these facilities may be permitted. Uh, as Senator Stone mentioned in his opening, I, I, I don't believe that there's any prohibition on a facility locating here. Uh, there is concern that depending on who may be in charge uh, at a local, uh, you know, a, a local government uh, arena or venue, uh, depending on 
how those rules may be interpreted or how someone may view a facility that comes into the in, into the state, they may suggest that they may be permitted in a different fashion. So it just it provides that certainty when you have states like Arizona and Utah uh, clearly defining it, similar similar to what we're suggesting here in, in SB 361. Uh, that level of certainty when a company is looking to site, uh, in, at least in our view, would look at states that have clearly defined it and have a clear regulatory pathway for uh, operation. All right. With that, you can both step back from the table slash hot seat. And we are going to invite those who um, would like to give testimony in support of Senate Bill 361 to the table. Madam Chair and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Tessa Laxalt and I'm here on behalf of the Nevada Manufacturers Association. We are here in support of SB 361 as it expands the definition for the types of post-consumer recycled plastics that can be used for the creation of alternative products and advanced recycling. There are a multitude of examples of consumer and commercial plastics being recycled. For one, my shoes are made of recycled plastics today. As a local example, Recycled plastics are also used to create decking for your outdoor porch. We appreciate the thoughtful ideas like this that help Nevada move her into our new future. Thank you to the sponsors for this bill. Good afternoon, Chair Pizzina and members of the committee. My name is Harrison Bond with the law firm Brownstein Hyatt. We come in full support of SB 361. This bill will provide legal certainty to important and emerging new industries and allow Nevada to be a regional leader in next generation recycling. Not only will this bill give all Nevadans more and better recycling and environmentally conscious options, but this bill will open the door to new good paying jobs and more diversified state economy. We support this bill and we respectfully ask that you support it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Tom Clark here on behalf of the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce. We're very much behind this reclassification into the manufacturing space. We do know that there are companies willing to come to Nevada, especially Northern Nevada who want to uh, fit into that manufacturing definition simply because they are doing something different than just what we traditionally do as recycling. There's a lot more science to it um, than what I understood. So for that reason, we are very much in support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else here in Carson City in support of Senate Bill 361? BPS, is there anyone on the phones? If you would like to testify in support, of SB 361, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, members of the committee and, and Madam uh, Chairperson. My name is Kyle Rudolph. Uh, that's R-U-D-O-L-P-H, I suppose just like the reindeer. Um, <laughs> I offer testimony in support of Senate Bill 361 today on behalf of my employer, Barry Global, which I serve in the capacity of Senior Counsel, Director of Commercial and Sustainability. Um, uh, understanding and appreciating the time constraints that we're under, I'm not going to, to uh, plow over the, the same ground that others have spoken about, but our organization uh, is one that manufactures packaging and engineered products across 265 locations in 39 countries, including here in Nevada, where we employ over 360 people at three separate sites in Gene, Henderson, and Sparks. We are a buyer of advanced recycled materials uh, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get the, the uh, uh, gentleman's name who asked about trash bags, um, but we do make uh, products abroad uh, using trash bags uh, that are recycled from advanced recycled materials. Um, in fact, we just received an innovation and packaging award in the United Kingdom that takes post-use grocery bags and hard to recycle films and converts them using advanced recycling the material that we use to make food grade bean pots marketed and sold by Kraft Heinz. Um, the Wendy's drink cups 
that Prophecy mentioned are also products that our organization makes utilizing 20% ISCC plus certified advanced recycled material. And the reason that, that um, our organization uh, believes that advanced recycling is important, uh, not only do we buy that material, uh, but we also use it and have the ability to use it in regulated food and pharmaceutical packaging applications that require a higher quality raw material in order to achieve regulatory compliance. So existing mechanical recycling uh, is great for things like water bottles, but our, uh, our organization makes over 100,000 100, distinct product SKUs for around 19,000 customers. And a lot of what we sell is regulated uh, for quality. And advanced recycled material has the quality characteristics that allow us to use post-use plastic in those food and pharmaceutical grade applications. So it's for those reasons that uh, Barry Global supports Senate Bill 361, and we would respectfully uh, request this committee to do the same. Thank you, BPS. Anyone on the phones in support? The public line is open and working. There are no callers at this time. Seeing no one else coming to the front in Carson City in support, we will now open testimony in opposition to Senate Bill 361. If you're in opposition, please come to the table in front. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Warren Hardy, today representing SA Recycling. Uh, SA is one of the largest recyclers in the United States. Um, I'm not really here to, to speak to or to pine on the, the concept of the manufacturing. Um, my concern is what the definitional changes will do to the, to the I'm going to call it the balance of power uh, in the industry. And I think Senator Scheibel hit on the key point for us. Uh, the definitional changes will have a significant impact on the re regulatory process. I will tell you, I brought a bill similar to this, 2011 maybe, 2013 that looked at exempting out um, scrap metal, which is what my recyclers are. Because I do agree completely that recycling products are not solid waste. They're commodities. Uh, this sort of came to my attention. The reason I brought that bill forward is we got, a, we got contacted by the health district saying that we needed to have a closure plan for our landfill. Well, we don't have a landfill. And if we were to close, we would have a commodity on our property worth several hundred thousand dollars that, that people would come and buy. Um, as I explored the idea and the concept for uh, d definitional changes such as these for the, for the scrap metal recycling industry, in my conversations with the Departments of Health in both ends of the state, I realized that that's tipping uh, a balance that has been achieved over many, many years. I will tell you that we were able to go talk to both health districts and work out our issues, and we feel fairly treated by the health districts now. My concern is by making these definitional changes, specifically in section 12, that exempts post-use uh, post polymers and recovery feedstocks out of the definition of solid waste will have uh, the effect of, of, of creating a competitive disadvantage for our folks. I do very much appreciate Senator Stone and the proponents for talking to me. I've proposed a very, uh, as your counsel now has become to expect of me, a very inartful uh, amendment uh, that kind of gets to what we're trying what we're trying to do here I still am not sure it's workable uh, I will happy to continue to work with the sponsors to try to find a way to address our concerns um, but we also are very concerned about calling out a special a certain type of recycling uh, to have a special category in statute um, such as advanced recycling we, we believe recycling is recycling I'll leave the discussion about uh, manufacturing to people smarter than I am, but those are my concerns on the definitional uh, side. I'd be happy to answer any questions, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee. For the record, my name is Joelle Gutman Dodson with the Washoe County Health District, and I'm just coming up here today to thank the bill sponsor, Senator Stone, and the committee chair. Um, we we and Trey Abney and his uh, client, we worked, we, we really tried to work this bill to a place where we didn't have to oppose it. We couldn't get there. Um, we will 
we will work with Trey um, if we can get, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can. But I did bring a subject matter expert who knows a lot more than I do, and he's going to officially oppose this. Thank you. Chair Bazina and members of the committee, my name is David Kelly. I'm the supervisor over the Solid Waste Management Program for Washoe County Health District Environmental Health Services. Um, obviously, Joelle has been in contact with you uh, and the bill sponsor, but I'm just clarifying our position. So we are in opposition to SB 361 because what the bill effectively does is just exempt a portion of the waste stream from regulatory oversight. We actually encourage the use of post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks, but we don't feel that they should be exempt from regulations uh, that govern the collection, storage, and disposal of waste. Uh, any facility that collects, stores, and recycles these products could end up with large volumes of material that could create a nuisance, harbor vectors, or be viewed as harmful to the public health if they're handled in an unapproved manner. Uh, as indicated, by the folks that brought the bill forth, there is nothing currently preventing these types of recycling facilities from operating. They would just need to ensure that materials are being stored in a nuisance-free manner and potential cleanup costs were covered uh, through some sort of financial bonding. We're of the opinion that advanced recycling facilities that collect, store, and process uh, these types of materials should be required to meet the same operational requirements as any business that collects, stores, and processes recycled materials in Washoe County. The current permitting requirements for the Washoe County Health District for these types of facilities are quite low. A one-time plan review of $762, an annual permit fee of $317. So the initial is 1000 aside from the, the um, creating the plan, thousand, just over $1,000 with an annual permit of $300. This would uh, allow for an annual inspection to make sure that the materials were being handled in a responsible fashion, and it would also require that they put something in place um, some method of financial responsibility for any cleanup costs should the company go bankrupt or something else go wrong. We, we had a recent smaller scale uh, 2016 that went out of business and the cost uh, would have been $20,000 to the municipality if they hadn't been set up to, to cover those cleanup costs. Uh, I think those types of cost permitting and just making sure that you can clean up are um, relative to the, the costs of setting up and running one of these facilities are so minor that to the point of being inconsequential and it's not a heavy regulatory burden while at the same time having the regulatory oversight uh, will make sure that the materials are stored correctly without creating any potential health hazards and that any secondary waste streams that may come out of the process are correctly disposed of. Um, thank you and if you have any questions I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, Chair Pazita, members of the committee, Bradley Mayor of Argenta Partners, representing the Southern Nevada Health District. Similar to Joelle's comments, we also have an environmental health expert on the phone. Uh, we do appreciate working with the proponents. Uh, there was a lot of internal discussions and conversations with them. Unfortunately, we did not find a solution to get uh, to anywhere but opposition on this bill, but uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, our, our solid waste management expert will be on the phone in opposition and he can provide further context. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition to SB 361 in Carson City? All right, BPS, let's go to the phones. If you would like to testify in opposition to SB 361, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair Pazina and members of the committee, my name is Nick Christensen, a volunteer member of the Sierra Club's Legislative Committee. On behalf of the club and our members and supporters statewide, I'm speaking in opposition to SB 361. The so-called advanced recycling is anything but. Uh, also called chemical recycling, this process uses chemicals and a lot of energy to convert otherwise non-recyclable plastics into other chemicals or commonly as stock to be combusted. This is what the term pyrolysis in the bill language means. It's using chemicals to break down plastic and then adding a lot of energy to it, significantly increasing our carbon expenditures. All of the methods of chemical recycling are dirty and energy intensive, but of the list, the two that are specifically referenced in this bill, pyrolysis and solvolysis, are arguably the most environmentally damaging. If you vote yes on this bill, this is what you're signing up for. There is so much I could say about why this process is bad, but my time is limited. So let me just quote from a recent peer-reviewed study from the journal ACS Sustainable Chemi Chemistry and Engineering. A reference to it is in my uh, testimony that is provided as an exhibit on Nellis. On page five, 
the researchers conclude, the economic and environmental metrics of pyrolysis and gasification are currently 10 to 100 times higher than virgin polymers, end quote. This means that using one of the mes- methods specified in this bill, pyrolysis, the best case scenario is that the environmental impact is 10 times worse than making fresh plastic from fossil fuels. Best case scenario. This process is terrible for the environment and terrible for Nevada. If we want to reduce the amount of discarded plastic in our environment, and given the amount of plastic in our landfills, oceans, food chains, personal bloodstreams, etc., we would be prudent to do so. The best way to do that is to reduce our consumption of single-use plastic in the first place, as Senator Gokachi has suggested. The less single-use plastic we use, the less we have to figure out how to recycle, and the less there is to need to be hauled around, take up space, and damage our environment. Legislation in the area of plastic use reduction could have a significant impact on the amount of plastic waste and the cost associated with processing it. However, given that we do have plastic waste, chemical recycling is just about the worst way to handle it. This bill would be horrible policy, and I implore you to vote against it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. BPS, anyone else on the phones? Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Burns, Southern Nevada Health District Engineering Manager. While it is not the intention of the sponsors, this bill will be removing a level of protection to the environment and to public health that is currently in place by the permitting process, including the regulatory oversight that currently exists for this type of facility. Southern Nevada Health District has following concerns regarding the bill and therefore cannot support it. Section 3.1, it references recovered feedstocks, such as unfinished chemicals and lubricants. Lubricants could be implied as waste oil, synthetic or refined crude, and solvents from automotive repair facilities. Removal of these items from consideration as a solid waste also removes the evaluation of hazardous environmental toxic characteristics that are likely present in such waste streams. Outside of the waste regulations, no other evaluation mechanism exists to protect environmental public health. Section 13, NRS 444-500, exempting advanced recycling from the regulatory permitting and oversight process that comes with solid waste management opens up possible environmental and public health consequences. The primary concern regarding this type of bill is that it opens the door to removing numerous types of operations from regulation that all present their own unique environmental hazards. The removal of permitting requirements would remove the financial assurance the permitted facilities are required to maintain to fund the removal of the maximum amount of solid waste allowed per their permit. Southern Nevada Health District has been forced to utilize these mechanisms on more than one occasion to fund the cleanup of a failed facility. The most recent of these was a failed facility that utilizes paralysis. One of the processes can already do this today under existing regulations. And for the reasons I provided, it is bare left to the regulatory process, which cannot be changed on a whim but instead must go through a public process and approved by either NDEP or the local public board. Within Clark County, the current permitting process costs and timeline to obtain a permit to operate a solid waste management facility is relatively minor. Depending on the applicant, a permit can be obtained within 90 days should everything be in order. Thank you. Thank you so much. BPS, anyone else on the phones in opposition? There are no callers choosing to testify at this time. All right. With that said, let's go ahead and move into neutral. Please come to the tables. It's complicated, Madam Chair. It's deja vu. Yeah. Uh, Warren Hardy under neutral representing the Urban Consortium. Don't have a position on the bill, but we wanted to make sure that, uh, that nothing is, gets in this bill that um, removes or otherwise um, inhibits the current oversight that local governments currently currently have for zoning and entitlements. I don't see anything in that bill in the bill with regard to that, but we wanted to make sure that was on the committee's mind. Currently, these facilities have to have a uh, conditional use permit. We just want to make sure that nothing in this bill, if it does go forward, uh, touches on on any of those issues. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. For the record, I am Jeffrey Kinder, Deputy Administrator with the Nevada Division of Environmental Protection. Joining me today, with me today is Darren Winkleman, Chief of our Bureau of Sustainable Materials Management. Um, as a quick overview, M NDP regulates solid waste and recycling under NRS 444 and 444A with the mission of protecting public health in our air, water, and land. NDEP is the state's solid waste management authority working in collaboration with the Southern Nevada Health District and the Washoe County Health District, who are the local solid waste management authorities within their jurisdictions. NDEP appreciates the goals of SB 361 to divert plastics from landfills and expand their life cycle uses, opportunities to increase recycling align with the overall goals, goals of NDEP's sustainable materials management program. We have prepared a diagram for the committee. Unfortunately, we submitted it today, so it should show up in Nellis pretty soon to support our testimony, but we also did bring some hard copies just to explain the state's current regulatory structure as well as what we understand SB 361 hopes to achieve. Um, our review of SB 361, SB 361 exempts the terms post-use polymers and recovered feedstocks from the definition of solid waste. This would be the, only the second carve out from the statutory definition of solid waste, with the first being an exemption for vehicles intended for wrecking or dismantling for parts. For background, as you consider this proposal, without passage of three, SB 361, advanced recycling facilities, as defined by the bill, would be considered a recycling center under the current statutory structure and regulated as a disposal site. This would require a permit issued by the division prior to construction and operation. Additionally, by regulation within NDP's jurisdiction, the application for such a facility would need to include the amount and types of solid waste anticipated to be received, as well as the design and operational plans for the site. Issuance of the permit would also require a public notice process. Currently within NDP's jurisdiction, there is no fee for such a facility. Alternative, alternatively, with passage of SB 361, NDEP or the appropriate local jurisdiction would still regulate environmental protection aspects for air and water, but would not uh, regulate the land component due to this exemption. Just a reminder, we have 12 minutes until we have to break. Yes, last page. <laughs> I would also like to note that our understanding of this, this type of facility may produce hazardous waste as part of its process, and with or without today's legislation, that activity would still be regulated. Uh, lastly, we appreciate the time the proponents have made available to us to discuss the bill. As we understand, one of their concerns is a changing regulatory landscape in the future. I would note, though, that under Nevada's Administrative Procedures Act, rulemaking process requires public involvement and a hearing. For NDP, that would occur through the State Environmental Commission with final approval by the Legislative Commission. With that, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to the next speaker. Again, just a reminder to everyone, we have 11 minutes to get through this bill hearing and public comments. So if there's anyone else who'd like to speak in neutral, please come to the table. All right, BPS, anyone on the phones? Public line is open and working. There are no callers at this time. All right, Senator Stone, would you like to come back up to the table? Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members, and I appreciate all the testimony uh, for and, and against this bill. Um, you know, when you look at solid waste um, regulations, uh, they really haven't been addressed uh, in, in a long time because of, there hasn't been these new changes in technology. And so this, these new changes in technology allow us to do things in an economical way that we haven't uh, been able to do in the past. Um, I appreciate uh, the, the opposition uh, proposing an amendment, the scrap metal uh, folks. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to support that amendment at this time, but I give you my commitment that we will continue to be working with all the opposition to try to reach an amicable compromise. Um, the question is, where are all these plastics that we're talking about going now? All of them are going into landfills. Um, this is going to provide an opportunity for all of our haulers to segregate these uh, materials and actually place a value on them and actually sell them which potentially could lower, hopefully, rates for trash hauling uh, fees that our constituents uh, pay. Um, sorry. Um, this, this 
type of regulation has been passed, or, or law, if you will, has been passed in 23 states. I, I'd like to have Nevada be a competitor for some of those high investment uh, companies to come here, uh, help clean our environment, create jobs. Uh, again, this is a, a manufacturing process that is different from typical recycling and that we're not just taking recycled products and we're using the recycled products for other things. We are actually taking these recycled, advanced recyclable pot products and make them into the original polymers that they were originally made from. Um, so that, that is what's, I think, significantly uh, different from traditional uh, recycling. So um, we, we urge uh, the committee to approve SB 371, and I give you the commitment that we will continue working with the opposition to uh, reach compromises where we can compromise and enable this industry to move forward. We have one more question on SB 361. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll be really brief. But do you envision then with your program that some of these waste haulers could in fact separate the products you need and then deliver them off-site to you as a, as a product? Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Jeff Stone, for the record. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, they call them MRFs. This is where they, they separate a lot of products. and. I can guarantee you that if these haulers can find value in something they're putting into landfills, they're going to instruct their sorters to make sure they sort these, you know, uh, toothpaste tubes and uh, food packaging uh, materials and put them in a separate pile. And I would imagine that they wouldn't even have to haul these to these uh, advanced recyclers. They'd probably go by and pick them up. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much. And with that, we will close the hearing on Senate Bill 361 and thank everyone who came in to testify and support opposition and neutral. And we'll move to the final order of business, which is public comment. As a reminder, public comment is limited to two minutes per person and cannot be based on any of the bill hearings that you just heard for SB 361. But please feel free to submit additional written comments to the secretary and they will be added to the record. With that said, is there any public comment here in Carson City? I see people rushing to the door and not the tables. All right. <laughs> BPS, anyone on the phones? If you would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. The public line is open and working. There are no callers at this time. All right. With that said, no more seeing no more public comment this meeting is adjourned thank you so much